Next Radio 2018 with Broadcast Bionics. Next Radio. Great, thank you so much for having me. I'm so pleased to be here to talk about branded podcasts and uh, what makes them amazing. It's something we're seeing you know, a big surge of interest in at Acast. Uh, lots of brands coming to us saying that they, they, they want to produce their own podcast series. Um, and really, uh, is this, can I, it's not working. Oh, okay, this is the reason why. Um, 76% of people who hear a brand message in a podcast take action as a result. Uh, and the reasons for that are, 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 are many, but it's mainly to do with the way people consume podcasts. They've got their headphones on, they're shutting the world out, they are usually listening to a host they're really, really loyal to at a time in their day where they feel relaxed or they want to escape the world. And so this makes it a really powerful space for brands and the reason that they think that they want to perhaps produce content of their own. Um, so just a couple of examples, I guess the big hitters. Um, on the left there, you can see the message. This comes from uh, Panoply out in, in, in New York. Uh, and this was a really brave, innovative sci-fi uh, drama series that they produced on behalf of GE. Really incredible listening numbers. And on the other side, you can see a podcast. It's actually an ACAR show. Um, it's a podcast series we've worked with, NatWest Bank on. They wanted to produce a series for women who wanted to start their own businesses and look at some of the challenges that women perhaps face. And I'll just play you a quick clip. This is June Sarpong um, from the first series of NatWest Women in Business. Hello and welcome to the NatWest Women in Business podcast. I'm June Sarpong and we're back for another episode exploring entrepreneurship, telling the stories of inspiring female business owners and finding out what it takes to reach the top. So there's June and the second series actually is now underway. NatWest have been thrilled with the results. They've seen huge traction on their website. Um, and yeah, it's been a, a big success story. So you'd think with all this amazing uh, stuff going on that we will be telling brands, yes, do a branded podcast, this is, this is the answer. And in fact, usually when brands come to us, the first thing we say um, is, don't do it. Um, honestly, there's easier ways to work in the podcast space. You can sponsor a show, you can run an ad campaign that will guarantee you impressions, that will help you reach you know, these amazing, young, diverse podcast audiences. And creating a series from scratch is really hard, even if you've got marketing budget. It's, it's a difficult thing to do. So there's easier ways of getting involved. One of those ways is could actually could be to to work with an existing podcast talent doing a branded episode. So I wanted to give you a great case study from this summer. This is one of our amazing podcasters, Adam Buxton, and he produced a branded episode this summer for Art Fund. Art Fund had previously sponsored the show, it seen really good traction, good uplift as a result of the sponsorship campaign. They wanted to do something a little bit more in integrated in uh, a way that only Adam can deliver. So I'll play you a clip of that. Don't be a fart, see some more art. Get yourself a national art pass. Visit major exhibitions for half the entry fee at places like the Tate, the V&A, and National Gallery. We are now in a room here at the Courthold, which is, I think every single one is smash hit, isn't it? Well, along there, it goes banger, 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 banger. Here we go. This is one of the most famous I wouldn't know who this was by in the world. That hasn't even got glass on it. Um, so this is Adam interviewing comedian Tim Key, uh, making the kind of show that Adam, only Adam can make. Um, the podcast worked as completely as a natural podcast uh, in its own right, and um, yeah, Art Fund were really delighted. So episodes is a, a really smart idea, guaranteed audience, you know what you're getting. If you do want to make a series, I would say some of the best uh, examples are the ones that perhaps are brave, are ambitious, do things a little bit differently. Um, so I wanted just to share an example from last year. We worked with Land Rover on the Discovery Adventures. So this was a, an audio fiction story, an, an adventure series that you could listen to in your car with your family as you're driving along in your Land Rover, I guess. Um, and yeah, it was really, really cool. I do promise you an adventure. Don't think I've got someone on my tail. Turn your next drive into a real family adventure with you at the heart of the action. The situation is now critical. In an all-star podcast mystery drama with a unique combination of fact, 
and fiction. We need to keep up the pace. My footsteps. Land Rover presents the Discovery Adventures. Subscribe to the series now. That was a little premature, but you can hear that that was the trailer that Land Rover ran to accompany the podcast series to market the show to existing podcast listeners. Um, and just a couple of points on this uh, show. Um, one thing to mention is about the cover art. Cover art is so important in podcasting. Um, and you can see up on the left, this is how they launched. Quite prominent branding there for Land Rover. And actually, we sort of advised them, you know, a few days in, I think you might want to change that and take the branding, have it slightly less prominent, um, because it can be a real barrier for podcast listeners. They can be really put off thinking that they're going to just get one big, long advert. So that's what they changed it to. And in fact, we saw you know, a big increase in, in new audiences when they made that transition. Another couple of great examples um, of shows that uh, I think really make use of the podcast medium, and then this is another key kind of takeaway. On the, on the left there, you can see DTR. This is from Gimlet Creative in New York. They produced a series for Tinder, and it was using all the data that, that Tinder has about how we date online. Um, you know, sex and relationships is really a subject matter that fits podcasting really well because you're listening with your headphones in, you're not embarrassed, um, the audience is really young, um, so great use of the podcast space. And on the other side, this is a podcast from Freya, Underwear, When Life Gives You Melons. Um, again, having fun with it, really like really cool branding. Um, the podcast audience, as we know, is really diverse. The male-female split is almost... Um, 50-50, so they know there's young women listening and that aren't necessarily catered for as much as they should be within traditional podcasting, so they found a gap, which is awesome. So, key takeaways, very much that. Look for the gaps, look for stuff that other people aren't doing. We get a lot of the same style podcast ideas pitched at us. Um, there's over half a million podcasts now existing on Apple Podcasts, and uh, it's really important to think about what isn't there, because uh, that's a great way to cut through spend on the production. Um, it's cheaper to make a podcast than it is to make a piece of video content or to do film, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in really quality producers. Really amazing production companies exist, particularly in the UK. We're so lucky, um, so make sure you invest in that. Alongside that, I would say, you know, trust those amazing people to create a really engaging podcast. And don't try and force your brand messaging in too much because the audience can spot it a mile off and they want something really authentic that works. It's just a cool podcast to listen to. They, they don't want one long advert. Branding, already mentioned it. Keep it minimal. Keep it off the cover art if you can. Um, keep it subtle. Keep it small. And finally, think about your promotional strategy because there's no other piece of uh, branded content that you would produce and stick it up and think that somehow the world will find it. They won't. It's very competitive, the podcast space. And you need to think, how are you going to reach those podcast listeners? How are you going to engage them? How are you going to get onto social media? So there's lots of different ways you could build out a marketing strategy. Um, particularly social media is a fantastic way of growing audiences. But also you could spend to promote the show on other podcasts where you're already reaching existing podcast listeners. So we kind of recommend a ratio of three to one, so one being the production budget, three being the, you know, the marketing spend alongside that, and that can really, really help you um, launch, launch with a bang. So if you get all of that right, I think you know, definitely on your way to be creating an amazing piece of branded content. That's it.